What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back again with another video, and we have an announcement video for you guys. But before we get into that, Barry, welcome Barry to the channel. He will be stepping in for Ben for this video. Barry, how are we doing today? You all right? I'm good, man. I'm good. We we got some positive, positive news. We have um, a signing yeah. to talk about, an announcement to talk about. Obviously, we know all the um, rumours. I mean, everyone, I'm sure, watching this video probably knows this by now, but Spurs have announced the signing of Guillermo Vicario from Empoli. This is the video um, showing the signing here. Obviously, it's very exciting. We, knew how, we now have a new number one goalkeeper um, signing for £17 million from Empoli. 26 years of age. Uh, it comes uh, with a few it Italian caps as well. Um, I'll read some quotes from the Spurs website in his first interview. He says... Um, I'm excited to play for Tottenham. It's a dream for me to be here, one of the biggest teams in England and in the Premier League. I would like to start quickly to join my teammates because for me, it's a big pleasure to be here. Um, he says, I didn't believe this opportunity. I told my agent it's my first choice. I want to go to a Premier League and to a big club like Spurs. For me, it's so exciting. I want to learn a lot of things because the culture of football in Italy is so different. I need to adapt quickly to my teammates, to the style of play. So many different, um, so many differences between Italian football and the Premier League. The fans are amazing as well. The buzz when you play, I love this mentality. Speaking about the coach, Ange Postacoglu, he said, I spoke to him and he told me the keeper is so important with, with his attack mentality he wants to dominate the game and I love this mentality it'll be a big chance for me he also goes and say I think we need to fight a lot we have to take um we have to take the best for the club I don't want to make specific goals because we have to focus day by day if we work a lot follow the coach I think we can reach a lot a lot of goals we are a big team of big players for me the team is amazing um and he also says um I wanted to play football not thinking about what it could be in the next years. I just think the best thing is to concentrate on the present. What you can that what you can do now and not what you will do. I do concentrate on the present and I live my life, my expectation, my football. I train a lot. I love to train and now this is my dream and I want to live my dream now. He also went on to say, talk about how he described his style of play. He called himself an attacking uh, goalkeeper with an attacking mentality, which is obviously what we want to see. Um, we actually have a video um, up on the channel if you want to check it out. Every pass Vicario <laughs> did for Empoli in 22-23. If you have 56 minutes to spare, um, go and check that out if you want to see his passing range, his passing ability. Um, Barry, though, uh, are you excited about this signing? Do you think... Um, He's going to be a very good goalkeeper for Tottenham. Um, have you been, been reading up about him? Obviously, playing for Empoli, who are 14th in Serie A, I'm assuming not a lot of people knew too much about him when we were first linked with him. And obviously, we were going for David Rea, but it seems as though we got priced out of that signing. But for you, when you look at this signing, does this represent Tottenham doing, like, a, is it smart scouting? Is it a smart approach? Or is it, again, a bit frustrating that maybe we haven't gone for Rea because of, of the price? Uh, look, I think it's, it's a couple of things. I mean, am I excited? Um, I mean, we should be always excited, um, but with a little, with a hint of trepidation. Obviously, everyone's saying he's a Galini Mark II, um, where he's been, and obviously unheard of. But look, if it if it means that we've gone away, um, we've done what we needed to do, um, we've looked at the data, which is what it suggests that, that that's the route that we're kind of trying to go down. Um, the data suggests that um, when you put in the similar similar stats or similar um, things that you want to look for, um, under David Ray, David Rea comes um, Vicario, right? So if you're looking at um, a 40 million acquisition versus a 17 million acquisition, um, obviously loads of people are going to say, oh, it's Daniel Levy, it's Tottenham, it's, it's going on the cheap again, right? Um so, look, only time will tell. Obviously, he's, he's really well spoken of in Italy. Um, you know, obviously, he's he's talks about as being the future. Um, so, look, I guess time will tell. Um, time will tell if it's if it's uh, what we've you know if, if it's kind of history repeating itself. But if that means that you know we put that other twenty three million to good use, um, you know, and that you know a big chunk of that goes towards a taps over let's just say um then then yes and you know and he comes off and it, and it, and everything is is good then 
then yeah, obviously it's going to be good signing. But I guess, like like we've all said, kind of a week ago or even less, no one had heard of him. Um, no one was sure on him. Um, and everyone wanted David Raya, um, who would have been, like we've all said, look, he would have been the third most expensive goalkeeper in the Premier League. Is that does he have the experience? He's he's got he's got an experience he's got experience with Brentford. Um, does that mean that that's you know is he an Allison or a you know an Edison t- you know type of signing? No, but um, you know I, I think forty million. Look, only time will tell. You got to remember as well. We signed what Hugo for what ten, eleven, twelve million or whatever back yeah. in the day. Um, so look. I think for me, we have to get behind, you know, if Andrew's obviously wanted him, um, he's obviously spoken to the player and we've just got to get behind him and, and and not look to the past. And we need to look forward to the to sort of the present and the future because we need to have, uh, you know, attacking dynamic young players who want to, who, who show that passion and want to play for the badge ultimately. Yeah, I think um, those are all fa- pretty uh, fair comments. When it went, I think, when it comes to the whole um, David Ray thing, one part of me is frustrated that we, you know, we, we, I think that I don't think Ray was just a first choice just based on his Premier experience and and his quality. I also think there's also was a he was also a data driven appointment, um, data driven choice. So for us to go for him first, I think the data probably showed us that he was the best fit, and then we but we have bought at the price. And we very quickly moved on and gone for a, 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 a player who's pretty much half the price, to be fair. Yeah. So part of me is pretty happy that we had not been held to Ramson over Rea. And we've gone very quickly and moved on uh, from him and found a goalkeeper of our liking with a, with the with that supports the data. And we've and we've and we've sealed him very quickly. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. But another part of me is just very frustrated that again. You know, it's similar to other deals where, for example, you know, we went, we could, we wanted Schneidlin going for like Stambouli. You know, the list is endless. Going, we wanted Skriniar going for Roden. Um, I'm hoping that this deal is more data driven than maybe the other deals supposedly were. So maybe uh, I don't know if the if the Roden deal, like we did, did we see he had similar characteristics to Skriniar? We went for him, even though he's far cheaper. I don't know. Like I'm hoping this is actually more sensible scouting and and by all accounts from all the um, talk about from Serie R experts they say he's been brilliant for the last couple of seasons at least especially last season he's pretty much kept Empoli uh, in the uh, Serie R um, by himself almost almost single handedly which is very rare for a goalkeeper and um, apparently his uh, obviously he's been recognised at international level now he's had a, he's had he's been capped for Italy um, his ability on the ball. Has been improving game by game. That's the saying. And obviously, if you look at his compilation of um, saves that he makes, he's obviously an incredible shot stopper. That's not in question for sure. Um, I guess the main question marks for me is he's only really been at the top level for a couple of years, yeah. so hasn't really shown it on a consistent level. Um, uh, I, that's the main thing. Um, and I guess as well, a lot of people have pointed out he d- does tend to spill the ball, spill the ball a lot in his compilations, rather than make um, push the ball away. So maybe that's something to look at. Um, but in 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 the sense of that, we are getting an upgrade probably on Hugo Lloris. He still he, he is also a 26 year old goalkeeper who's you know goalkeepers usually come and in, come into their prime in their late 20s um, a lot of the time. Um, he's going to he's a lot taller than Raya and he's a bit taller than Lloris as well. Um, very good at coming for crosses. So, just in that sense, in getting a keeper of that profile, is it exciting in general that we are getting finally getting that upgrade on Hugo Lloris? And um, hopefully, it just stop um, we stop leaking that amount of goals we were in terms of getting the mistakes he was making. Yeah, and and look, it'll be interesting to see how, like you said, you, you know, there's obviously there's been various videos, various compilations, um, some good, some bad. Um, but I think, look, from a from an attack, we we saw last season when Forster came in, and that attacking, you know, that kind of dominant um, force in the in the box with his height and everything else. Okay, he's not as high, he's not as tall as Forster, but you know, we we I, I think we all felt a little bit more confidence when the ball was coming, ball was coming in, in the air, um, the goalkeeper was coming out to you know claim the ball, dominate his box, and I think that's what you know that's what we want to see. Um, so yeah, I think I think you know, like you said as well, Sim, is that goalkeepers don't tend to, you know, come into their prime until their late twenties. Um, obviously, look, David De Gea had a very kind of 
shaky start maybe at United and we might have a little bit of that at the start while he gets used to it. But, you know, if this is, if, we, if we're talking about what we did with Hugo um, and, and the amount that we've paid um, and that, you know, we could be our goalie for the next, you know, seven, eight years, you know, that's, that's a hell of a, you know, that's, that, that price tag is nothing. Um, so yeah, look, I'm, I'm excited. I think, yeah, we, 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 we do need to start, stop leaking goals. I think, Obviously, this, the formation change that Ange plays as well will hopefully, you know, will hopefully have an impact um, on it. And look, it's exciting to see. It's exciting to see what, what else kind of happens. But no, look, I I think whoever it was going to be, look, there was, if it, if we'd gone and got Raya, we'd have spent too much money. If we've gone and got Vicario and now it's an unknown and, you know, there's always going to be the, the, Kind of roller coaster, the Spurs roller coaster that that's, that that we, we've had, and the madness that we'll have to say, you know, if he if he doesn't have a good couple of first games, everyone will be like, I told you, what a waste of money. We should have got Raya. Let's just say Brentford go and win their first three games at top of the league or close to being top of the league. We we have a sticky start, and it you know you know what's going to happen. And I think we just need to look. Ange wants him. Uh, and it's not a case of like we all said before, if Conte wants him or Mourinho or Jose wants him or Poch wants him or Nuno wants him, then I want him. But he's clearly, and has clearly started the work beforehand. And I think, look, whatever has happened has happened. And if we are going to back this manager and we're not going to go through this manager carousel like we have done, then we need to really say, look, let's back the players on the pitch and let's see what can happen. Uh, look, I'm not, I'm not going to get crazy excited, but... I am excited that we've, I think what I'm excited more about is like you said, is that we've done it early. We've not, we've not, it's not dragged out. You know, we were kind of no, notified about it and kind of a couple of days later or not even that we, we had the, the, here we go. Um, so if we can do that with, you know, with another couple of signings and, and build that foundation, then yeah, it is something to be excited about. If we don't have any ex- look, we don't have any- with Conte with with Jose. We had expectations. Are oh, we going to win? We've got to win and win now, manager, and everything else. But I think if our expectations are, we know what we need. If the club are on board and the fans get back on board, I think that's the most important thing with that engagement. Then yeah, why not? Let's get excited. You know, you know uh- me. Well, I was booking hotels to Istanbul, right? <laughs> exactly. So um, get get those ho- hotels. Well, actually, you have to put the only, only ones you can really book at Wembley. So yeah. uh, this season, <laughs> unfortunately, no European trips. But um, one thing that um, Vicario's dad was been quoted saying, he spoke to Postacoglu last week. And Postacoglu was saying how impressed he is with Vicario's mentality, having come from, you know, very low down in Serie A and worked his way up. Um, quite at his rise has been... Been slow, you know, getting to Serie A by the age of about 25. And now he's 26 and being considered one of the best uh, last season. But he's had to fight his way there. It's not been easy for him. So having a keeper with, with something to prove as, mu- as much as um, he has been showed in, in Serie A, how good he is. But he de- definitely um, has a few doubters now um, because he's not been heard of much. How much of an impact, how, mu- how important do you think that will be to how he is at Tottenham with that with that mentality. Yeah, look, I think I think he likes, you know, like like he said in his video, he likes to train. Um he, he he's got a point to prove. I think obviously, like we said, everyone's talking him up to be the next big goalkeeper for Italy. You know, and and you know how many how many goalkeepers have they had that have been, you know, absolutely out of this world. So, you know, there's there's a lot of pressure on him. Um, and I think, look, listen to listening just to hear hear him speak the passion and everything else that comes out. Look, he's not going to want to come in and and do a bad job. But I think I think the most important thing is, like like we said, is that the Spurs fans need to support him. You can't, you know, if there is if there is something that happens those first few games, you just got to, you know, that it, he's not young, young, but he's inexperienced in terms of what the Premier League is going to be, and you know, there's going to be. You know those big burly strikers that want to get going to get up in his face, up for corners and everything else in the in the first few games. So look, he's going to have to learn and he's going to have to adapt really quickly. Um, and and mm. how that happens, that, that that'll be on him. But I think, look, I think he 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 definitely knows what he needs to do. He's obviously look, we we all know about where we're at in terms of Tottenham Hotspur. I think the world can see where Tottenham Hotspur is. So look, he 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 could see it as a cha- massive challenge, and I think he does. He sees it as a challenge, sees it as a way. Look, as a new manager, 
big pressure. You know, the old guards kind of stepped aside. I'm going to be the new number one. Um, and that, yeah, there, there, there comes a load of pressure on that, but he could, I, I think, you know, hopefully, um, he's going to thrive on it. Yeah, let's hope so. Um, look, I want to welcome him to the club. I'm obviously hoping he's going to be a massive success. I'm excited to see him play and what he can bring to the team. And let's just hope that the scouts have done their job and everyone, uh, all the, and the data has done its job. And let's hope he's going to be our keeper for the next 10 years or so, just like Hugo was. And um, that's that's what I'm hoping for. Um, the, obviously, there are going to be a few doubts uh, at the start, but let's hope he proves a lot of them wrong. And I'm excited to see him to see him in goal for us and be our number one. So uh, welcome, Guillermo. Let's see how you do. Um, but look, Barry, appreciate your time, mate. Um, appreciate you coming on the video. We'll see you no soon. see you all very, very soon. If you want to see some Vicario content, go check out on our channel. We've got a compilation of all his best saves for Empoli, and we also have every single pass he made during the 22 23 seasons ago. So check that out. The link will be in the description, or you can just go on our videos on our content and it'll be there. But thank you for joining us today. Let us know in the comment section below if you're excited about the signing of Vicario as well. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come on, you, come on, you